In this lecture, we are going to learn about React Portals and what is its use. React Portals provides a way to render children into a DOM node that exists outside of the DOM hierarchy of the parent component. Now, what does that mean? Here, if I go to this index.html file, here we have one div element with this id root and we are rendering all our components of our React application inside this div element. Okay, so if I go to this index.js file here we are using this render method to render this app component inside this root now what is this root this root is nothing but the html element with this id root that means this div element so if you go to the browser and if you take a look at this application in the developer console you will notice that if i expand this div Inside the body section, we have only one div with this id root. And inside this div only, all the components are rendered. Now, React Portals provides us the ability to break out of this DOM tree so that you can render a DOM node which is not under this root element. Let's see how we can use portals with a simple example. Let's go to VS Code. And the first thing which I'm going to do is Inside this index.html, I am going to add another div element. So let me copy this div from here and let's add another div. And let's call it maybe root portal. Now let's go ahead and let's create a new component. And let's call this component portal component. Okay, here let's go ahead and let's create a function. Let's call it portal component. And from this portal component, let's return some JSX. Let's simply return one H1 element. And here, let's say this is portal component. All right, let's also export this component. So for that, let's say export default portal component. And let's go ahead and let's use this portal component maybe inside this component too. So for that, first, we need to import portal component from this file and then after this paragraph element let's go ahead and let's use this portal component all right let's save the changes let's go to the web page so here you can see this is portal component so that portal component has been rendered here if i expand this body section if i expand this div that portal component is also rendered inside this root component. So this is the default behavior. But what we want is we want to render this portal component inside this div with this ID root portal. So for that, what we need to do is instead of directly returning this JSX from this portal component, we want to call a method called create portal. And this create portal is present inside the React DOM object. So let's import react dom from react hyphen dom library all right and then instead of returning this h1 element directly what we are going to do is on this react dom object we want to call create portal method and the first argument of this create portal method is the JSX which you want to render. So here we want to render this H1 element. Let's pass that. And the second argument is the DOM node where you want to render it. So here we want to render this JSX inside this div. So for that, here we can specify a second argument using this document.getElementById method. And here we can pass the ID of the element where we want to render this JSX. So here the ID is root portal. Let's copy this and let's pass it here. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. So here we have this error export React DOM was not found in React DOM. Actually, this is a default export. So we should not wrap it within parenthesis like this. Let's save the changes now. Let's see if that error is gone. And you can see that now that error is gone. 
and now you will notice that that h1 element that portal component is not rendered inside this div with this id root instead if i expand this div that portal component has been rendered inside this div with this id root portal and this is what we use portals for using portal we can render a JSX or some HTML in a DOM node other than the root element. Now here if you notice, we are rendering this portal component inside component 2 and we are rendering this component 2 inside component 1 and this component 1 is re rendered inside this app.js and we are rendering this app component inside the root element that means inside this div. So in your React application, even though all the components are children to app component and the app component is mounted in the root DOM node, it is possible to break away from that root node and mount on any other DOM node that you wish to using React portals. All right. Now, one more thing which you need to remember here is that the first argument of this create portal method can be any value which can be rendered in the web page. It can be a number, string, JSX or any other component. All right. Now that we know what portals can do for us, the next question is why do we need them? One of the use cases where the portals are required is having to deal with the parent component CSS when the child component is a model, a pop-up or a tooltip. Let's understand this with an example. To understand this, I'm going to create a new component. I'm going to call it model. And here, let's create a function. Let's call it model. And from within this function, we want to return some JSX. And in order to save some time, I have already written that JSX here. So let's grab it from here. And let's paste it here. And let's wrap this JSX within react.fragment. Let's also copy this react.fragment from here and let's specify it here. And this should be the closing react.fragment. All right, so now that error is gone, let's also provide some tab here. Now I'm also going to create a CSS file for this model component. So let's call it model.css. All right, now again, in order to save some time, I have written some CSS here, so let's grab it from here and let's paste it here. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's import this model.css inside this model.js. And finally, from this file, let's also export this model function. Now, we want to use this model component inside this component too. Okay, so from here, for now, I will remove this portal component or I'll try to simply comment it. And let's import model component. Okay, and let's use it here. Let's go to the web page. And here we have these four errors and all these errors are in model.js file. So here it says react is not defined. Let's go back to our model component. And here we are using this react.fragment. In order to use that, we also need to import this react object from react library. All right, if you save the changes, that error should be gone. Now we have these three errors, show model and hide model is not defined. That's because here I'm using this show model and hide model. So basically what we want is, in the component two, we want to have a button element. Let's go ahead and let's create that let's call this show model so when this show model button will be clicked i want to show this model component for that on this button element let's go ahead and let's add on click event listener and this should be listening to display model function and here let's go ahead and let's create that display model function okay and let's also go ahead and let's import use state 
from this react library and since it is not a default export we need to wrap it within curly braces like this all right now here let's go ahead and let's use this use state function and for the initial value i'm going to pass false here and this use state function is going to return an array so here let's use this array destructuring syntax and inside this let's create a variable let's call it show model and let's also create a function which will update this variable so let's call it update show model so what we want is when this show model is false in that case this model component should not be rendered in the web page that means it should be hidden but when this show model is true in that case this model component should be displayed in the web page so initially we are setting it to false so initially this model component will not be visible but when the user clicks on this show model button at that time we want to display this model component okay so when this button is clicked this display model function will be called inside this function let's go ahead and let's call this update show model and here let's update the value of this show model variable with the value true and let's also pass the value of the show model to this model component for that on this model component let's create an attribute let's again call it show model and to this let's assign this show model variable okay now let's go to this model component here this component is going to receive a props and on this props this show model will be created as its property so in the model component we are adding a class on this div which is going to display the model component okay so on this div we are adding this alert class and we also want to add this hidden class dynamically based on the value of this show model if this show model is true we, we don't want to add this hidden class but if this show model is false in that case we want to add this hidden class okay and this show model is the property of this props object so again this alert class will be applied on this div element but this hidden class will be applied dynamically on this div element based on the value of show model is true or false if the value of show model is true in that case that hidden class will not be applied in that case we are assigning this empty string but if the show model is false in that case this hidden class will be applied on this div and same is true here as well on this div also so this div is an overlay div we also want to display this overlay div when this show model is true so here also let's say props dot show model finally on this button element also we have this on click listener so this button element will be present inside the model window so in the model window when this button is clicked this model window should be closed for that we are using this on click event listener so again in this component 2 let's go ahead and let's create a new function let's call it hide model and on this model component let's create a new attribute let's call it hide model and to this let's assign this hide model function and here we are assigning this hide model without using parenthesis like this okay so here we are passing a reference of this hide model function to this hide model attribute now in the model component here when this click event will happen we want to call that hide model okay so again this hide model will be created this hide model it will be created as a property on the props object so here we can say props dot hide model and here we are already importing this use state so let's remove this statement from here and inside this hide model function we want to set the value of the show model variable to false so let's do that and with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and here let's click on the show model button so you can see a model window has been displayed now when i click on this ok button this model window should disappear 
So everything here is working as expected. Now we learned that one of the use cases where portals are required is having to deal with the parent component CSS when the child component is a model, a pop-up or a tooltip. So that means if I go here, we are calling this model component inside this component 2. So here for now, instead of using this react.fragment, let's go ahead and let's use a div element. And on this div, I want to set some CSS style. Okay, so here first I want to set the width, let's say to 300 pixel and I also want to set the position to relative. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and now if I click on the show model button, you will see that now this alert window is being displayed in a slightly different way. Here we want this alert window, this model window to expand throughout the screen. but since we have changed the width of this div element inside which this model component is being rendered, that style is also affecting this model component. And that's why we should always render a model, a pop-up or a tooltip using a portal. So here what we can do is, let's go to this model component and let's render this model component inside this div element. Okay. So for that, what we can do is we can use react dom dot create portal and we can pass this JSX as its first argument. And then we can also pass the node inside which we want to render this JSX. So again, for that, we can say document dot get element by ID. And to this, let's pass the ID of the node where we want to render this JSX. In our example, we want to render it inside this div with this ID root portal. And let's go ahead and let's import react DOM from react hyphen DOM library. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and now let's click on the show model button. And now you will notice that now this pop-up window, this model window is being displayed as expected. So even though this model window, we are rendering it inside this component 2, where we have set the width to 300 pixel. Since this model window is being rendered in another node inside this node, this CSS style is not affecting this model component. I hope with this example, now it is clear why we need portals. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it.